And we're back with more Final Fantasy XIV. When we last left off, we had just, uh... We think we had uprooted the ivy from her frickin' hiding place, but... Welcome back, Bayon. I understand that Alfino had a task for you. May I ask what it was? Charges of treason and espionage against Aline Royale. I can scarce believe it. Could there not have been some manner of misunderstanding? No, it avails us not to dwell on it. Whatever the truth may be, we must trust to the authorities to uncover it. Let us speak of another matter. I am pleased to report that we have made progress in our efforts to find a way into Ice Heart Sanctum. Wonderful. Let's see, how close are we to finishing this? Oh! One, two, three, four, five. Five quests remain in this storyline, so let's continue. As you may recall, Ice Heart used the Aetherites in the depths of Snowcloak to teleport a short distance to the west, most likely a sanctuary of some description. It is there that we suspect she means to summon Shiva using the crystal she so stole from the House Fortum caravan. The heretics believe that they are bringing about the second coming of their patron saint. But if, as we suspect, they mean to hold a summoning ritual of the kind employed by the Beast Tribes, it seems likely that the result will be something more akin to a primal. Suffice it to say, they must be stopped, and stop them we shall. But first we must surmount the obstacle that Iceheart has placed in our path. Ordinarily, it would be a simple matter to tap into the established Aethernet and there fo I follow our quarry. However, despite our best efforts, we have been unable to ascertain the position of the Aetherite to which she teleported. Our prevailing theory is that she destroyed the second Aetherite upon arrival, a reckless, desperate measure, but also an effective one. After discussing the matter at length with Uriange, we have concluded that we lack the expertise to develop a solution. Which is why we have called upon the aid of one who does possess such experience, a colleague of ours who is currently en route to Revenant's Toll from Charlian. She should be arriving within the hour, in fact. Since you are here, mayhap we could welcome her together. I am certain she would appreciate the gesture. Let us make our way to the northern gates and await her coming. Why do I have a feeling that this is not going to end well? Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, so much to do, so little time to do it. Let's sit here and wait. Please let there be voiceovers.
Minfilia, am I right? None other. I bid you welcome to Revenant's Toll, and thank you for traveling so far on such short notice. <laughs> As if I could ever say no to Urianje. Moonbreeder is an accomplished Charlian scholar, and an authority on Aetherite technologies. She has played an invaluable role in our search for a means to capture Asian souls. Charmed, I'm sure. Likewise. Let us return to the Rising Stones at once, then. We have much to discuss. This better be something. This is best be good. Come on, voiceovers. Moon! Gods, it's been ages! Oh, longer, sister. A joyous reunion indeed. Well, of course it is. Moon and I are like twin sisters. Save in appearance and aptitude. <laughs> Everyone, if I could have your attention. We have with us an esteemed guest who has come from Jalian to assist us. I bid Moonbreeder join us here that she might share with us her extensive knowledge of Aetherites. Also, as many of you are already aware, she has been overseeing our research into White Aurasite, a sample of which she has been good enough to bring with her. Well, I had to come, didn't I? You'd have to be bloody daft to turn your nose up at a chance like this. Where better to conduct my final tests than a land so steeped in ether you can taste it? Tis plain the passage of the years hath done little to dampen thy youthful spirits. And nothing at all to reform thy youthful manner. Oh boy. Boobies! Hey, where in the hells have you been hiding? Uh, unhand me. I come all this way, and that's what you have to say to me. I much preferred when you were pleading with me to drop everything and hurry to your side. What was it you said? None save thee can satisfy this need. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and Thangrid's just like, whoa, <laughs> I want to hear more of this shit. <laughs> Thine heartless attempts to misrepresent mine all too innocent motives do thee little credit. <clears throat> mine intent, as well thou knowest, was but to impress upon thee the gravity of the circumstance. Lest thou doubt, a deiform entity shall shortly be summoned, save if thou and no other grantest my compeers thine aid. You still haven't found it, then? You're missing Aetherite. We have not. No. We know that Iceheart teleported to an Aetherite not far from the first. 
Yet even after careful analysis, we could not locate the second beacon. We now suspect that the heretics destroyed the second etherite to impede our pursuit. Our allies continue to scour Snowcloak for Iceheart Sanctuary, but we have no guarantee that they will find it. <coughs> Yet it must be found, for even now Iceheart prepares to call upon Saint Shiva. I'm sorry, but if the etherite's been destroyed, then that's that. Although, you're absolutely sure she used the first etherite, are you? She didn't just use teleportation magics? One of our own bore witness to her escape. I can say with absolute certainty that Iceheart used the Etherite. In that case, there might be a way, so long as the ethereal current is still flowing. Truly? How? We use the current to recreate the beacon. As you know, Etherites are a bit like lighthouses. We use them to reconstitute our physical forms when crossing the ethereal sea. Without them, we'd lose all sense of direction and our essence would dissipate. However, we don't rely solely on these beacons. There are currents of ether which flow between them, currents which help guide us to our destination. Now, these currents will gradually dwindle away to nothing if an etherite is destroyed. But, if even a sluggish flow remains, we could theoretically use it to direct a surge of concentrated ether towards the void left by the beacon, and thereby fill it up again. Like opening the floodgates to fill a dry riverbed. Though, correct me if I'm wrong, but would we not need a veritable reservoir of ether? In concert, we might manage to channel a sufficient volume, yet that is not my chief concern. To direct the flow of so great a volume of ether with the requisite precision would be a nigh impossible task in itself. I barely succeeded in facilitating travel to an unattuned beacon. That which you describe sounds considerably more difficult. And dangerous! Every person who has attempted to teleport in this fashion has died in the process. They, however, did not have white aura sight at their disposal. I can use it to channel all the ether you can give me into the etherite. However, white aura sight cannot retain ether for an extended period of time, so we would need to infuse it immediately beforehand. Just so you know, I'd confidently give this plan better than even odds of success. And if the worst comes to worst, your people won't suffer. Though it risk the lives of our best and brightest, we have not the time to seek other options. If the ethereal current still flows, we shall carry out Moonbreeder's plan. <sighs> spirit, let's roll the dice. All right, then let's do it. Check my arm armor right quick. Okay. So save for the Nox circlet and my Kartana Atma. Uh, I have everything I really need. I have already informed Alfino of our plan to recreate the beacon in the manner Mon Brit Hida described. He agreed that despite the inherent danger, it represents our only hope of success. He also said that he wished to meet with you at Snowcloak before proceeding. I expect you will find him waiting for you there when you arrive. I want you to know that I appreciate everything you have done on our behalf, Bayon. And that I have faith you will return to us, as you always have. Alright, off to Karthas. The instruments of our deliverance. Whoops, wrong way. All 
All right, we'll take the chocobo porter to white brim, but we won't take it all the way to white brim We'll stop it about One, two, 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 one, And now we take the rest of the way. Make sure it still works. Then we take the rest of the way to Snow Cloak. I just want to see this for a moment. Nope. Back with Alfie new. Good to see you, Bayon. I was starting to wonder if you were having second thoughts. Captain Ilbert sends his regards, by the way. He attends to the investigation of Berlin Royal in Olda, even as we speak. But I shan't I'll not distract you from the matter at hand. We can discuss the ivy upon your return. I trust that, by which I mean to say... <clears throat> the others are waiting for us at the Aetherite. After you, Sion. Yep, let's do it. <sighs> There, it is ready. Ha! It worked! I think. Try tuning to the Aether right now. Feel for the current and try to locate the beacon. We have done all we can, Bayon. For now, let us withdraw. 
When your final preparations are complete, you must seek out the beacon we have created. If, by the grace of the Twelve, you've arrived safely, you must stop Iceheart before she summons Shiva. We cannot ignore the possibility that our actions have alerted Iceheart to our plans. Should that be the case, she may attempt to hasten the completion of the summoning ritual. And if she succeeds, you will have little choice but to face Shiva in battle. Knowing little of this saint, I cannot say if your own strength will suffice, and so I would encourage you to call upon your allies. Some may have reservations about wagering their lives on the success of Mon Brida's experiment. But others sure, will surely agree that desperate times call for desperate measures. Ah, before you assemble your party, pray speak with that knight. I believe he has a message for you from Sir Emmerich. Again with this guy, Jesus fuck. Sir, Sir Emmerich regrets that he could not be here in person, and asks that I read you this letter. <clears throat> Ishgard faces an unprecedented threat, and yet... Quote, Ishgard faces an unprecedented threat, yet in our hour of need, it is not her knights who stand poised to defend her. Bayan Oronir, the warrior of light, savior of Eorzea, your deeds this day shall not be forgotten. Where others would flee, you choose to remain. Where others would falter, you rise to challenge. Where others would use their gifts for selfish ends, you wield yours in service to a greater cause. May Haloni bless you with good fortune and see you safely home. Unquote. All right. Um, we'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to go eat. Until then, Kruznik out. <laughs>